Hello lovely people. I thought having made the Purple Poppy cover yesterday using the freebie paper from the Facebook group, it made sense to turn this into a mini series and now make the journal to go inside. So I've collected up lots of bits and pieces that I have that relate to postage stamps, letters and stuff like that because having done the letters and the stamp it seems an appropriate subject. So for anybody who is new to journal making or has never made a journal before, <clears throat> here we go. So I have collected all of these book pages from my collection now obviously if you're new you don't necessarily have all these different pages and that is not a problem at all you can make a journal perfectly well by just using this is coffee dyed tracing paper this is coffee dyed lined paper from a, a standard notebook and these are coffee dyed copier pages okay you do not need these these are things that if you grow to love junk journaling you will gradually build up over time but what i have done is i am going to do two signatures that will fit nicely in this space here okay so everything i do i'm going to do in and twos as it were so i've got two quotation pages okay and i'm just going to make two different piles i've got <coughs> two shorthand book pages because i figured you know sometimes letters are not handwritten they're not personal they are written in an office this is from a first day cover book and there's the second one of those and you can see that although these are all book pages they're all slightly different colours and that's all part of what adds interest this is a different shorthand book okay and then we've got a typing book okay and then this one i've got i was thinking about business letters when i pulled out this page because this has got checks on and things from banking so i thought that was interesting so one of them on there and this one is about tax and pension and wage slips so let's put that one on there this is a different typewriting book two of those um let's do it that way okay and then i've got a big page here so i'm just going to tear this one in half first of all and then i'm going to fold it in half okay like so now obviously you can use digital kits for this and all of these pages would represent the pages that form your digital kit that's another way of doing it if you don't have a pile of books although i've got to be honest and say i've been to the charity shop this morning there were lots of books there and then this is just um an old book of how things are made and done and these pages are on how stamps are made so I felt that was appropriate for the subject matter and it was amazing once I started digging how many letter type themed pages I was able to find so okay so there's my two signatures they're obviously not complete yet because now I'm going to bring in the plain pages now I've got one two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten pages so far in each signature. So I'll we'll fold this one in half. And I've only got one of these. Lovely crinkly noise on this one. So that's going to give me 11. And as you'll see, they're all different sizes, which again adds for interest. That's 11. I've only got one of these, so again I'm going to tear this in half. First of all. That's 12. Right, and then I've got 13. And then this will make 15. Okay, now each of these folded pieces of paper, so this is the piece of paper and it's been folded, that actually creates four journal pages. Okay, because we've got one, two, three, four. So my 15 pages here is actually going to give me 60 journal pages. And having two signatures means that I am going to have 120 pages in the book. Now, the way I like to do it is I like to try and do a variation so this is quite busy so this is plain okay this is slightly busy this is quite busy there's lots of information on that one and this one has got nothing on it and then i've got this one quite a lot of words a little bit of color and a plain one Okay, and then I'm going to put a little one in, and then one of these, and then this one. Okay, and then this one. And then this one, and this one, and this one. Okay, so that is my signature. Now, where you've got varying heights, you can obviously move them around. So, you might want to put this one towards the top, and this one more to the bottom. So, that you've got the two showing together. You might want that one at the top and this one at the bottom and then you might want that one much more in the middle okay and again you might want this one to the top this one to the bottom this one there's another one here look so we put that one to the middle because we've got two different sizes and then put that one in there and you can spend as much time as you need to laying your pages out so that the book looks the way you want it to look okay so that is signature number one i'm just going to put a paper clip to hold it all together and now I'm going to do this one, okay? So this time I'm going to take my lined page and I'm going to start there, okay? And then I'm going to have this one. 
I'm going to have this one maybe to the top and this one to the bottom. Okay, and then I'm going to get a big page, put that one in there. And I think we'll have another plain one now. So put this plain one in there. And then we have this one. And then I think I'm going to have that black and white one at the top. And then I'm going to have this creamy shorthand one to the bottom like so and then I'm going to put this one in make sure it's up the right way put that one in and then I'm going to put this one in then I'm going to put my plane and then I'm going to put this shorthand one right in the middle and I'm actually going to refold this one around the other way because now it's going to be in the centre we're going to see that typewriter which I think is much nicer like that so just line that up so it's in the centre and I'm going to put another paper clip whoops I've just knocked everything down put another paper clip to hold it all in place. Like so. So they are our two signatures. Now, when you look into our journal cover, you'll see that whilst these are the right height, which is perfect, they overhang. So we do need to trim them. You'll also see it looks like there's an awful lot of cover and not much journal. But once we start adding pockets and things, that's going to feel right out. OK, so I'm not worried at the moment that these are hanging out. We can trim these off later on. So what we need to do now is we need to work out exactly where we're going to put our journals. OK. And the easiest way to do that is to find a piece of plain paper, so I'm just using the back of that, that is the same size as your spine. Okay, so I'm just going to fold that over like that. And now I know that that is the size of my spine. Look, it sits perfectly between the folds without interfering okay so taking your ruler and a pencil we know that this is an inch and a half let's move them so you can see what i'm doing okay this is an inch and a half in measurement now we have got two signatures but we need a space and then a signature and then a space and then a signature and then a space. So although we've only got two signatures, we've got one, two, three, four, five measure points. OK, so an inch and a half, actually, if we do it in half inches, gives us six. Because there's four and two quarters so that will give us six but we only want five unless you want to leave a double space in the middle which would allow you to stuff in an envelope full of ephemera or whatever so you need to make decision but what we really want is five not the six so we need to find a way of dividing our inch and a half in Excuse me, I think I'm going to sneeze into five. OK, now I'm going to have to bring this closer because my eyesight is a bit rubbish. So if we know that there are 16 eighths in an inch. 
okay and there are eight eights in half an inch 16 and 8 is 24 24 you can't quite divide by 5 but 1 eighth of an inch is not really going to show so if we divide that by 5 that would come to 25 eighths ideally yeah so what I am going to do is I'm going to do 5 eighths as my measurement point I hope that made sense and I didn't just confuse you all. So if you find it hard on your ruler, you can do this on your scoreboard because your scoreboard does have eight measurements. Okay? So if I put this in and I'll show you what I mean. So we line that up there like that. And we can go one, two, three, four, five. No, sorry, I've done that wrong because it's not eighth measurements, is it? It's more than an eighth. We want five eighths, which is there. Yes, yeah, see, I'm fibbing to you, aren't I? That wouldn't work on there at all, would it? Okay, so you need to use this calculation to create your space. So I am just going to do it here, okay, because I'm going to find it easier to do it and then show you, I think. So, one, two, three four five okay one two three four five can you see that i hope that makes sense to everybody so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to put my journal my signatures there and there okay so If you put your ruler on and you're going to go at two and these are eighths of an inch yeah the ruler's gone there it is two 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 and then if you draw yourself a line on the spot that you want to be your signature okay so draw my line yeah that doesn't look very straight to me that looks like I've had a bit of an issue. Let's try and line that up. Okay. Did that make sense? I hope that made sense. And I've not confused you all. And then you want three points at which to put your stitch in. Okay. So this is eight. So I'm going to go an inch and a half which is there and I'm going to go an inch and a half doesn't help because the metal ruler is shiny and I can't see what I'm doing and now my gap is five so I'm going to two and a half okay and then just come along that line there along that line there and along that line there and now you have got one, two, three, four, five. They are your six sewing points. All right. So I'm going to get my all out and my needle and thread. So 
so first of all my all and I need to do one last thing which is make sure that I can see that my S's are at the top okay and I'm going to line this up smack bang in the middle of my spine make sure it's in the right place because once you start making holes you're not really going to be able to move it it's, everything's going to be out of line okay so i'm going to line this up like so and i'm just going to press through to my mat like so Okay, so now I've got six holes. They are not the easiest of holes to see, I've got to be honest. There's one. I've just put my all right through. There's the other one, it's because this pattern fabric. There's one. Make sure you don't stab your finger. Here's the other one, and then one there, and we have got one there. Okay, you can see them probably better on that side. So that is our six holes, right? Take your paper clip off the side, open it to the centre. Okay, if you're sure that you are happy with the positioning of your papers, put this clip on there, take another clip and put it on that side, like so. Okay. If you haven't got giant paper clips and you've got bulldog clips, you can use bulldog clips. It does exactly the same job. Just hold your papers in place. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my measure guide again and I'm going to place it inside my journal right at the very center making sure that my top is at the top and i'm going to run my all on that line there at the top okay and then i'm going to run it there on the middle and then i'm going to run it there at the bottom because we know they will be in the same position as this because we use the same measuring tool, okay? Now you can either do the other one right now or you can do it one by one. I'm going to do it one by one. So I'm going to use this fawny colour thread. And I'm going to use one, two, three lengths. And I'm going to snip it off. I'm going to find a needle that's got an appropriate hole to take the width of this thread. Now this is actually waxed thread. You can use embroidery silk for this. Um, you can use any thread as long as it is a really good strong thread okay standard sewing cotton will not cut the mustard it won't be strong enough and take your threaded needle and go through the middle hole okay don't put it all the way through leave yourself a good long towel that's slightly bigger than your paper and then take that 
through your middle hole in your journal cover simple as that pull it up line it up and then take your thread and put it through the bottom journal hole okay pull it through and then push it through your bottom hole in your papers check that you've come out where you wanted to there and pull it through okay you can start to tighten it a little bit now and then up to the very top hole and through okay you pull it out this is where sometimes your double thread gets caught and you need to loosen that through and then go in through the top hole of your journal cover whoops like like that not like that because i'm sewing it to the wrong side like that okay so you can see now that we've used all three holes once we can pull it tight but we need to go back through this middle one okay so i'm going back through making sure that i do not put my needle through the thread because that will make it really difficult to do your next job open your book up find your middle thread and push it as far up away from you as you can that will help you not sew through your thread okay and put your needle back through your centre hole now this is where I sometimes struggle because I'm a little bit blind in case you hadn't noticed so having pick pick it up make sure your needles come out the middle which is where you want it to be and pull your thread through take your needle off because we finished with that for a minute take your paper clips off and now what you need to do is make sure that you've got one thread to the right one thread to the left and what I do is wrap it around my fingers and pull one up and one down okay and pull and then when you think it's tight turn it over and flick it you want it as tight as a drum you want it like a violin string you really want it to twang yeah once you're happy that it's tight enough you need to do a double knot one two and just leave them dangling to the bottom because we're not sure yet whether or not we want um, to have you know buttons or things dangling so there you go and then all I do is I go through and I just press pages open to make sure that they're all in there and just got the memory of the folds okay and that's our first signature in just like that and now we're going to do the whole thing all over again okay so here's my pages i'm going to take that paper clip off i'm going to find the middle of my signature or my book whatever you want to call it i'm going to clip that side and i'm going to clip that side so basically you need one top one bottom and you need it fairly close to the fold okay like so we are going to put in our measure again making sure it's in the right place and we're gonna line up on that hole and we are gonna push through 
and we're going to line up on that middle line and we're going to push through and then we're going to line up on the bottom one and push through again now this piece is technically now rubbish because the chance of you having another journal that needs exactly the same holes positions is unlikely so again three lengths of thread take a needle if you do want wax thread this is readily available on places like amazon or ebay um, you can get yourself some of this or you can even actually buy a kit where you get an all and i mean this particular kit um, it had four reels that not all of this came so we had four reels of cotton i believe we had four clips we had um, a thimble for pushing through a ruler a little blade um, and there was a packet of needles as well but i'll be honest with you i couldn't get on with the needles i've not really used them so so again remember overhang your page a bit because we want to make sure we've got extra thread double check that your pages are up the right way okay and then through our middle hole to the back turn it round down through the bottom hole okay and then drop it drop your cover and push through the hole okay, in your papers make sure that you're in the center where you want to be how don't stab yourself pull it all together okay back out back out of the top where we did our hole separate your two layers of thread and back out that top hole like so okay and then just pull it all nice and tight and we're going to go down and we are going to make sure that this piece of thread is as far out of our way as we can get it okay going to pull that thread tight and then you're going to go back through your cover this one's always a little bit trickier because obviously now it's held quite tight poke that through see if we've got it where we want it no we haven't it's actually come out a couple behind so just find the right location for it can be a little bit fiddly but we'll get there there you go you saw what I did just to make it a little bit easier on myself and then pull that through take your needle off pull your paper clips off we don't need those anymore and obviously get your thread so you've got one either side and pull it nice and tight one to the top one to the bottom and pull okay don't put it too hard you don't want to rip your pages see that's loose we need it tighter than that the top one's fine it's the bottom one or vice versa that's better that's better 
so whoops got twists there right and do your double knot one two drag them down because we're not sure and bring it all over press down and then just a few pages just to make sure we reinforce all of those fold lines and then you see you've got a space in the middle there where you could put something if you wanted to so the last job to do before we go into the fun of decorating is to trim up this overhang so the way i do this <coughs> is open up your, fold, uh, your cover so both pieces are over there okay make sure you've got it nice and straight put a ruler on there and trim to where you want it now as you can see I'm not measuring this you can either trim it like this oh there's snippers I always forget their snippers you can trim it like this with a knife or you can obviously take your decal ruler and you can tear the edges away and that means you get to decide where you tear and you can have varying depths of paper throughout your book okay so it's entirely up to you where you want to tear and that one there only came halfway for some reason I'm in trouble with this one don't quite know why but there you go that's that one now this one I'm going to go right to the edge of the writing on the page and then this one I'm going to pull down there. This one. Like so. Sorry, I think I just jogged the camera. And then we've got this one. And then we've got this one here. I think there's one more after this. Oh no, it might be two. Okay. Then flip it all back shut as it were. And now you have now got your papers on the edge of your journal. If you still want to trim more, then obviously you can trim more. We can take this one here, for example. And we can trim another bit off there. And as if by magic, we've got interesting papers. And that is how you make the bones of your journal. So, I hope that's been of interest to you and I didn't totally confuse you with the measurements in the beginning. Stay safe, happy crafting. I'll be along with part three sometime very soon. And during that time, we can think about how we want to decorate up these pages with tags and tabs and pockets and all sorts of things to make it interesting. Okay, bye for now.